Hey everyone, it's Jake Clark here at Fargo 3D Printing. Today I'm going to be showing you on the computer how to change MakerBot profiles so that you can get the most out of your MakerBot 3D printer. One reason that we're going to talk about the profiles is because the extruding temperature is actually at 215 instead of 230. We recommend printing at 230. We've been having better luck with printing at 230. Uh, we've had under extrusion if we're printing at 215. So I'm going to show you guys today how to change that profile um, to change that to 230. So we're going to open MakerBot Desktop here. Um, so this is our fifth gen interface. So we're going to go into settings. And you'll notice that some of you uh, will actually have something that looks like this. Break out that advanced options tab. Uh, once you do that, you'll see you know all, all these different settings. If you're not familiar with these, um, you'll have to watch one of our other videos that explains what this actually is. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, these are your different settings that you can change. Infill is how solid the part is, shells, how many times it goes around on the outline, and layer height is how often it does a layer. Um, so in the profiles here, you can see that there is low, standard, and high. If you look up here um, to this area here, um, you'll actually see that um, this down here is actually going to change. So if I go to low, that changed, the low changed, as well as that changed um, also. And if I go to high, again, that changes and that changes. So really what we're changing is we're just changing which one we click up here. So what we're going to do is go down here to create profile and we'll have something of a template to pick from. So here we have MakerBot ABS, Standard, Dissolvable, Flexible. What we're going to go down here and do is MakerBot PLA Standard for Replicator 5th Gen. What the template has is a bunch of different settings for the 5th Gen's extruding. So we're going to leave that and now we're going to name it. Name it something important. So here what we're going to name it is, or something that's meaningful. So 5th Gen underscore Standard because we're going to have the standard uh, layer height. Then we're going to go 10% for 10% infill, 2 for 2 shells, and raft because we're going to have a raft on this. So I'm going to hit create. And now you can see that this bottom here has changed. You also see this blue that says see documentation for custom MakerBot slicer profiles. If what That'll make a little bit more sense once we go in and edit the profile. So I'm going to come back to that here in a second. But um, So we're going to go in and edit the profile. Now this actually showed up um, in Notepad. You can actually have it show up in Microsoft Word. If you're doing it for the first time, when you hit edit profile, it actually pop up and say, which I can't find something to open this .json file. Um, so you'll have to go go select Notepad or Microsoft Word. Notepad's fine. Um, so this looks a little little scary to uh, begin with here, but don't worry. A lot of these settings are what you'd be changing in the MakerBot software. So here you see layer height, 0.2. So that's 0.2 millimeters or 200 microns. Uh, down here you'll see the extruder temperatures. So it's at 215. We'll come back to that in a minute. Number of shells, it's doing two shells. Down here, uh, bridging. So what bridging is, is if you have a gap over 80 millimeters, what it's going to do is try, or, or excuse me, under 80 millimeters. If you have a gap under 80 millimeters, what it's going to do is actually bridge that versus using support if you had support selected. Since we don't have support selected, um, it'll bridge, it'll, it'll bridge those regardless of the length. So we won't worry too much about that. Um, that's kind of more of a medium setting to change. Uh, raft, yes, uh, true, we want a raft. Um, and down here is supports, false, no, we don't want a raft. So the rest of the settings uh, you can read up on. There's different you know, bridges, layers, infill, feed rates, and, and uh, a lot of these settings you're not going to need to know or not going to need to worry about. But the main one that we're going to worry about today is the where did it go here? The extruder temperature. That's the main one we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work with. So just change that to 230. If you're working with a different material that requires a lower temperature or a higher temperature, uh, you can come in and, and change that and save it accordingly. So we're gonna bump both of those up to 230. We're gonna have two shells. We're going to leave the bridging on. We're gonna have raft on. 
and we're gonna have supports off. Um, so what you can do here is file save, control S, whatever you want to do. I'll just do file save. Make sure you click file save. Um, that way it gets saved to its um, location that we'll, we'll worry about a little bit later. Um, so now all these different all these different settings, all these different things, what do they really mean? Well, if you're curious, you can come down and hit that blue C documentation. What that's going to do is bring you to something that looks like this where you can read up on a lot of the different things. So under speed, um, actually let's go here, let's go to shells. Under shells, if we click on shells here, make sure you scroll up it's weird how it does that but number of shells so this defines the number of shells printed on each layer infill sh uh, infill shell spacing multiplier this defines the overlap between the intermost shell and the adjacent infill so some of these things you don't even mess with um, but you can if you are that type of person that wants to tweak things and, and, and really play and really experiment with your machine that's what those other settings are there for. So where your profiles actually live once you create them is in your file folder. You go to your C, C drive, go to users. In this case, it's under John. If you are uh, my PC or, you know, Lucy or whatever the computer's name is, that's where it's going to live. So it's going to live under John here. And then it's going to be my things. And then profiles. And then that's where the profile actually lives. So if I was to go in here and click on the miracle um, .json file, you can see that now I have access to all of the stuff we changed. Um, so what you can do is you can come in here and change it. You can access it through the desktop. I prefer the desktop access. Um, but that's where it actually lives. So if I was to come in here and delete this folder, that would actually get deleted out of MakerBot desktop completely. Um, and then I have to recreate it. So what happens when you're a school or college or education institute when you have multiple people logging in onto one computer? So let's say you have one computer that's dedicated to the 3D printer in the lab or in the classroom and the teacher creates a profile for the students to use so for our case, let's say, you know, for, for changing it to 215 to 230, um, the teacher creates that profile, but now the teacher logged into their, his or her name and then logged out of his or her name and the student logs in under his or her name. What's going to happen is those profiles are actually going to be gone for that student because when you cre when the teacher created that profile, uh, they created under their username. So let's say Dr. E in in this case, um, she created all the profiles for the students and then Lucy, Jane, and John were the students. They actually wouldn't have the profiles unless they're copied into their My Things folder. So one way to kind of get around that is either a Google Drive or a Dropbox folder that has all of the profiles that you want to use for the class. Um, so if you have, you know, 5th gen standard 20%, 4 raft, 4 shells, a raft, and supports, um, and you had, you know, however many combinations of profiles you wanted, throw those in a Dropbox, throw them in a Google Drive, and then those uh, students can copy and paste those over into their My Things folder. Um, that's the easiest way that we've found, found to do it. Um, it gets a little, that's the easiest way we found to do it. It gets a little tricky with a network login, log off kind of system, but that's kind of the best solution as of right now. Now the students could make their own profiles if, uh, they're comfortable making their own profiles. And if the teacher is comfortable make, you know, letting them make their own profiles, it's case by case basis. Um, so that's really where your profiles live, how to access them, and how networks work with these profile systems. So thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put those down below. Otherwise, for Fargo 3D Printing, this is Jake Clark. Make sure you get printing, stay printing, and change the world.